So good morning everybody. Welcome to our first panel discussion on ECR responses and insights from the pandemic into, uh, into work life, into research and into publishing. So the panel was pre-recorded um, about two weeks ago and I think this is a good sign. Um, it lasted about 90 minutes and some very, very clever people have managed to condense it to 30 minutes. Um, so we'll watch that uh, now and you'll see the participants and be introduced to them um, and then there'll be a Q&A afterwards, some of us here, some of us online. So do start to use the platform chat or Twitter or whatever to post any questions as we go along. So early career researcher insights run VT. So to, just to kick, to get us going, um, I just wanted to ask each of you, come out of the pandemic, what do you think is the kind of the one major impact, one major takeaway on ECRs that you have, you, you've taken from the research? So, uh, Ji, maybe I could start with you. Yeah, I think the pandemic, pandemic has brought a lot of changes to early career researchers' work and mentality. Uh, I think remote work, online teaching and video conferencing have become part of their daily lives and daily experience. And everyone gets used to do that. Nothing is, is for sure, uh, I think. They prefer to not making long-term plan, plans because it doesn't work in the pandemic. For example, I went to a study in University of Tennessee, but I, I have to cancel it. Uh, otherwise, I, I cannot go uh, because of the pandemic. Uh, ECRs like like to adjusting, uh, keeping on uh, adjusting their plan at any time according to the environment change. So I think the the most uh, um, the most important thing for e ECR, uh, no matter which country do they come from, in which country they are working. Um, I think they, they have to learn to get, uh, get, get used to, to how to have to get along with changing, keep on changing environment. Brisa, what about for you? Uh, the impact is, uh, seems to be a bit patchy. Yeah, it's a bit patchy. There are impacts actually in their life, but not uh, in uh, or on the scholarly communication behaviors. So in terms of attitude and practices, the scholarly uh, communication behavior, especially publishing, remains the same. Yeah? So uh, there is more evidence about them being, uh, being stressful, uh, but they do have clean mechanisms. Okay? Uh, also, they are, they are resilient and they are also resourceful. Uh, resourceful. This is what I see from, from the 20 uh, career researchers in my sample. Uh, especially though with caring duties, um, not the uh, the ladies, but also uh, the men who are actually caring for, you know, uh, taking of their wife during maternity. In Malaysia, uh, not during maternity, maternity leave, yeah, uh, uh, the, the parents will always come, all right, and take care of uh, the lady, yeah. But in terms of this early career research, the, the men also are having their, you know, caring duties, which actually um, uh, uh, affect okay, their performance in terms of uh, their productivity in terms of doing research. That's terrific. Absolutely. Yeah. I come almost straight back to the whole job security and uh, uh, question when we, when, when we, when we uh, dig in a little further. Um, David, how are you? As far as the U.S. goes, um, uh, in the research, I had um, uh, 20 to start with, and then uh, we lost one um, from at least on the pandemic. Um, we had severe mental issues, uh, and we had another one uh, with long COVID, uh, and fortunately, he's, he's doing uh, quite well. But um, I guess uh, one of the things that, that was uh, a bit startling, I guess, to me was uh, those that were planning on being academics, they will, they're continuing to be academics. Uh, this has not derailed them at all. You know, people at this level, they, <laughs> for those who've gone through the process, uh, you, you've got to be resilient. 
uh, to, to get there. Terrific. That's some great names there. Thank you so much. Anthony, anything to add on top of those? Before yeah. Before I dig in deeper? Yes, I think so. Um, I, when I, we did the first interview, I thought I was able to say that the, almost all the early career researchers were very resi- resilient, was the word also I used at the time, and that they were very intent upon continuing with their academic careers. And the second interview, knowing them better by then, I was able to put more into the question of burnout, which is something we were out asked to look at in the same interview. And I found that although they denied being burnt out, some of them were significantly stressed because of the whole business of not being able to get into the lab, being working from home. In my case, none of them were doing teaching because they don't do teaching at this level in the UK on the whole. But they were suffering. Now, secondly... A number of them had definitely decided not to continue in academic life because of the up, up, upheavals and the, in the clarity of the precariousness of the academic life. So the heavy weight upon shoulders and their senior people's shoulders, and what a bad time they had. They had decided, in principle, several of them had already started process of leaving the academic life, but had not got there very far yet. But uh, others were verging, training towards thinking of being. So for uh, those who are in this research university, because uh, my sample came from two rich universities in Malaysia, yeah, being in research universities, they have certain expectations right, uh, in order for them to get uh, a permanent job. Yeah, so they are all on contracts, all right, during the first interview. Yeah, so they really want to go uh, for big an academic right? an academic researcher and be attached to this. In fact, those who are in research centers also, they would like to go to the faculty. So for these 20 early career researchers, of 70 of them, they are still, uh, they are researchers and also academic researchers, uh, feel that uh, they, are, they are more secure, okay, in terms of job when they get their contract extended. They are on track. And the track given is two years. Every two years they have to extend the contract. Uh, they are more secure in terms of job because uh, they have tags and they know, uh, you know, they can decide where they can actually publish and they clear guideline. David, is that, is that chime with the experience, say, in the US? Yes, uh, very much so. We had several of the ERs um, had recently secured jobs as assistant professors or um, working at a, at a national laboratory or working in the private sector. Several of them got jobs during the pandemic. Um, and the doctoral students, um, they, they have expressed, a, you know, a, a slight insecurity, but for the most part, the doctoral students were uh, still, you know, one to two years out. And so they're very optimistic that things will be, you know, back to normal by those times. So, G, for you, has been, have you seen either locally or, or generally that ECRs are leaving academia on the other side of the pandemic or, or are they staying? I think generally they feel that the world is very stressful as uh, peers over uh, overseas, especially after the pandemic. There have been fewer job opportunities abroad. Many young um, people, young researchers who got a good education got their diploma from overseas, they return to back to China. Um, so there are more competition, more people uh, uh, come to. Uh, come back to China to uh, to join the commission and uh, they they go for the work the the opportun- job opportunities. So, um, I remember at least the three of them mentioned that they they felt very happy and uh, lucky to work at university because helped with people who work in small companies in the industry and they feel they can salaries on time. So kind of a pattern emerging that there is. Yeah. 
broadly, ECR is taking a long view that, that there is still security and a, and a broad level of commitment, but the additional stress. You'd, you'd agree with Anthony? Yes, I, I, on the whole, yes, they were, uh, contrary to the situation in China, I found that they, um, they, they were getting more aware of the carelessness of their situation in the UK. Some of the people we interviewed were early were postdoctorals, and some of them have been being postdoctoral work for some years. And they will find if you had them move from Spain, they had the same experience. And um, they were very affected by the fact that you had to get a new grant or get on, on a new, new team every two or three years. And the grants were too short to really concentrate on your work properly. Uh, but this was only some of them. I mean, the uh, the, uh, the doctoral candidates were had a new knew if they managed to get a doctorate, they had uh, they did that. It was something. It was an easy uh, aim to see, an uh, easy easy conclusion to that aspect of their lives. It's interesting uh, because from my own ex- experience, I think the funny should be uh, should be harder to get. Because for, from my experience, no experience and my expectation, but my interviewed, uh, my ECS, they, um, most of them said they, they don't they don't feel any change. It's it's the same because they um, one of them mentioned um, the government put more um, funding into uh, earlier researchers. That's they feel uh, they get support. It's obviously one thing changed. The universities were closed. Um, assuming we're talking mainly about, about higher education based ECRs. Those that were that depended on being in the lab, it was pretty tough for them. Um, everything slowed down and then uh, supported um, supply chain issues. So others that were doing qualitative research, uh, similar to what we were doing, um, they, they, were, they found ways to move around. And, and some of those ways, they said uh, actually were beneficial. Uh, so, for example, some people in general uh, were were uh, more more productive than they'd ever been before because they had time, uh, no distractions, uh, no interruptions for people coming in and out of their office. Um, it, 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 things were just great for them. Then you had others uh, that it was painful for them. One uh, assistant professor said, "You know, before the pandemic." Every day, every day, there would be some light that comes in by, by talking to people and by engaging with people. And she said, when the pandemic hit, everything just went dark. Uh, on uh, funding, thing, several mentioned that uh, had, um, they, they looked great on paper because Grants started. Grants came in during time, um, and so their administration looked at it, said, "You're boy doing great." Uh, and but they reminded me that you know that was like years ago when they started on the proposal, and 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 all the collaboration that went on uh, from conferences, and, uh, things like that. Um, that was responsible for this. The, the funding coming in, in the um, uh, during the pandemic, and and what they were concerned about is not right now, but the loss of collaboration from not being able to to meet face to face with people conferences. Thank you. I uh, know absolutely. And Bruce, did you find the same thing that, that there's obviously an impact on day to day? working life, but also on things like collaboration and communication? In terms of collaboration, this is what I see. Um, there, there is actually a distinct, I mean, a difference uh, between those graduated, the early career researchers who graduated abroad, right, and those who graduated um, in Malaysia. Yeah. So during the pandemic, uh, those who graduated abroad, meaning that at that time, during the first interview, they just came back. They just came back and got a contract with the university <clears throat> as an academic. They managed to go back to their um, to their supervisors and their supervisors' network, meaning that the collaboration uh, go on. 
okay, especially those who graduated from UK and also Australia. Yeah. Fortunately, for those who are who graduated locally, they only managed to do collaboration locally. China enforced very strict lock policy. We, we couldn't go to university for like、uh, five five months. And many early career researchers mean that they cannot go to laboratory,、uh, or they cannot send the bio、um, biological samples, experimental ingredients to、um, to foreign countries that they have stop stop their experiments. And for some doctoral students, they they have to delay their graduation because they they need to do this or start again.、Um, but this is a this is a big impact in short term.、Uh, in the longer view,、uh, I think they are very optimistic. Do conferences have changed forever, Anthony? I mean, do you see the whole conference world coming back to where it was, or do you think we're <laughs> heading a different place? As I agree entirely, they very much want to get to some face to face. On the other hand,、um, one or two of them said to me, "Because we are now so expert on Zoom, it's not so much a problem." Or Zoom or Teams, more often. But、uh, the other thing is that some of them who did、um, qualitative, like as David said, I had quite a number of people who were really psychologists or statisticians originally. They had to. They learnt to use the software. Which the other people done later, so、uh, in the past, and so they did. They, they some of them had, and they, they pointed out to me. Two of them pointed out to me that、um, they had. This was a great skill they they found because it's an extra skill. People were very keen on Twitter, and and twenty three out of the twenty four used Twitter a lot, and the other one was thinking of doing it. Uh, and this is much more used to Twitter than our previous work, which happened the, in 20, 2016 and 2018.、Uh, Twitter had come, really come forward as a preferred search gate was less important by people、okay. than it had been.、Uh, and、uh, the other, they don't use things like Instagram or my people didn't or WhatsApp, or whatever it is. Malaysians are not fan of Twitter. I mean, for, for academic researchers, okay, as a consumer, yes. But not as a platform for、yeah, build their reputation.、Uh, Instagram, not much use.、Uh, yeah, but 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 such as say,、uh, Twitter, which is which is very which has a very good potential、uh, for additional building, is not being used. China people mainly use WeChat for maintaining their rep- reputation and profile. Yeah,、okay. uh, re- Last year, we mentioned ResearchGate. Actually, compared to the first round, there are two only two people this year. To,、uh, I mean, two thousand and twenty one mentioned、uh, ResearchGate, and they they most of them have their、uh, profile, have their account on ResearchGate, but、uh, so many,、uh, not so many of them use the use it regularly. They use WeChat for、uh, maintaining and.、Um, I, what, what interests me is that WeChat is a Chinese-based、uh, social network. I asked some of the、um, uh, ECRs why、uh, the EU stick on、um, using、uh, WeChat rather than ResearchGate or LinkedIn or other tweets or Facebook.、Uh, one reason is they blocked, right?、Uh, they have to use VPNs.、Uh, but the other reason, which is more important, is that they、um, they. It's very handy. It's very convenient to use a、um, uh, uh, normal social media that everybody use. I just c- c- clarify something. What they wanted to use,、um, what they were using to for particularly was was point out the to, to, to the URL of latest latest publication. It was part of the visibility. The publication was still the most important thing, but it was. They want to make it visible by using Twitter to tweet. To, to, that was amazing. In the U.S.,、um, Twitter is is、um, really the dominant ability or promotion tool.、Um, LinkedIn was mentioned once or twice,、um, but it, it really was uh, Twitter uh, mostly in, in the United States. They, they use such kit. I mean, they have a rich kit presence. They are not active there. They said that they. We will share if only they have solid results. I just wanted to circle back to work life. 
to the question of stress and I to specifically use the word burnout. Um, and I just wondered if you picked up anything in terms of support from either institutions, employers, funders, or recognition of stress and burnout? Um, or did you feel that the ECRs were essentially on their own? I introduced the word burnout to my people. They were not happy with it. They felt it was too extreme. In the case of my people, it varied a great deal how much support they got. It really did vary from person to person. This is also hand in hand with the question of mentors. Some of them had a lot of mentoring, and some of them didn't. And some of them had very uh, attentive group leaders, or whoever they were, or super research supervisor if they were um, doing doctorates, and some of them didn't. And, uh, but a very huge amount from person to person. Hey, I don't think many Chinese uh, research, early career research mentioned burnout, but, uh, or they have the same term, but they don't definitely use it. They, they mentioned a lot of stress, stressful, uh, but they didn't never use burnout. Uh, they, mm, I think they still have hope. They're still living in hope. They still feel um, they optimistic about their future and their work. Okay, um, all right, as far as um, uh, the publication, like nothing, not, not much has changed, yeah? Uh, because, uh, as I mentioned earlier, they are strategic uh, in terms of publishing, publish uh, based on how they are being assessed, yeah? So they strictly publish in in journals, okay? uh, in index journals. So indexation uh, still matters to them. David, is that the same experience for the your your researchers that not much really changed with some it was like that but with others uh they actually produced more uh because of having time right yeah when you're sitting home <laughs> yeah yeah and then you don't have uh, students coming into your office or uh or colleagues coming in for chat sessions, uh, uh, you've just got more time to focus. I agree with uh, Abriza uh, that for Chinese uh, researchers, um, journal, uh, especially the journal with high reputation, high impact factor is still very important for them. But after the pandemic, more and more people know what is open science, what is open access journals. They have uh, the impression uh, they like the idea of open and sharing everything free because they benefit from it. If the assessment criteria have not changed, then it won't necessarily affect the venue of publication that they might that they might seek for their papers. Is that is that fair characterization, Anthony? Well, I think so. Um, it, it happened that two of the two universities where I, people early career researchers from, one was Cambridge and one was Manchester. The university had begun to take an interest in um, the Dora in the San Francisco Declaration. And they had begun to interview, they had been and sent down instructions to the staff at Cambridge, suddenly, that when you're interviewing staff, you must ask them about their own activities. So this is quite surprising to me mm. because and most universities, if they, knew, if they noticed it, they signed it. They didn't actually do anything. And many of them didn't do it. Even in the UK, didn't, didn't sign. Many of them didn't. They wrote open access as a feature of journal pretty low. More important was prestige. In my case, in the UK, it was audience was at the top. In most places in the UK, it was a impact factor or prestige. Yeah. Uh, and um, or indexing, but not in my case. It was more and more uh, impact factor on the Dora um, comment. Um, so it was interesting. I, I none of my ESRs uh, had heard of Dora. Completely oblivious to it. Mm, interesting. Could I add something here? Um, of course. This is I, I, far previous work and. We um, came up with the three words characterized the millennial attitude and um, openness, transparency, and sharing were these three words. Now, I, came, I tried these on some of the people who were a bit younger, who, who were longer millennials, and 
Uh, with millennials, they're, they're not actually technically millennials. And it says, this represent your views? And they all said, all the time this tried on, they said yes. Uh, that is um, sort of a policy that the correspondent author uh, should always be uh, uh, the principal investigator if it is in research or uh, the supervisor okay, of a particular uh, PhD work. So in many cases, these ERs, they are not qualified to be the correspondent author. <clears throat> yeah? So uh, ECRs uh, love a uh, journal that uh, can have more than one corresponding author. Yeah, uh, and also ECR feels that, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, the journals should also be more friendly like, in terms of APC. So they feel that, uh, yeah, there should be some mechanism for the ECR also uh, to contribute in peer review because they say that they have the time. <laughs> they have the time to do review and they love uh, to do peer review. They learn a lot from peer review like this. The whole peer review question, I think, as part of that, you know, obviously, pub published author EC relationship is obviously alive. David, did you find your, your ECRs kind of were content with peer review um, or saw it as something that could be improved? We asked about um, this peer review vouch for um, uh, you know, quality and trustworthiness. Um, most everyone said, uh, at least to some degree, yes. And a few even said it was uh, to a great degree. Uh, in other words, no one said, no, it, it, it doesn't value for, for, um, for those things. Some of my people were really keen on doing more peer review, and others were just too big. Another uh, uh, point that came out in, in the peer review question was, um, or how to improve it was um, incentives for yeah. reviewers. Yeah, right. um, whether it's monetary payment or something that would boost their um, promotion, um, they several. I was surprised to see as many yeah. as, as was. Several said there it really does need to be some incentives. Uh, to come to your question that what the publishers can do for uh, ECRs, I think um, um, the, the publisher can give um, a, a, a certification to the ECRs who, who, who have been, who, who review papers, who done their job rates. I have received several, uh, like a certification, right? Uh, looking paper, uh, although it, it was an um, electronic format, and I received that certification. Said uh, thanks to my hard working as a reviewer, um, and I can add this to my profile, and I and can, I can list this to uh, my yeah my web page. So yeah, kind of credit. So that's what I think. general um the ecrs do acknowledge that they do the library first they do not say this but when we ask them the questions okay what's the first uh, platform that you go to okay, to find uh, you know your 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 research materials everybody reported google uh, scholar and PubMed, and they only go to the library key discovery services okay when they have identified article that is not available on the internet so they do appreciate the library uh, uh, because of the journals, because of online databases and all that. But uh, unfortunately, the library is not the first place that they go to, right? Uh, and also, um, they they uh, they felt that library or the librarians can do more in terms of uh, helping them out. In the U.S., um, <clears throat> uh, we had a, a really good age range. I think the average was a, average age was thirty three and a half. And what was really interesting is when, when I looked into these um, issues with, uh, like, the library not being mentioned uh, for either searching or obtaining uh, the papers, it, it, was, it was when you look and separated into younger uh, ECRs and older ECRs, it was kind of interesting because um, the, 
the older ECRs did to um, be able to uh, talk about specific services of the library. And uh, and the um, if there were any services mentioned by the younger ones, it tended to be journal su subscription. Uh, they, the younger ones also had uh, more negative sentiments. Now, you know, <laughs> that could be just the difference between young and old. You know, older people under uh, you know, have, have learned not to be so uh, snarky. <laughs> My ECR spending uh, library for two usage. First of all, the um, portals of knowledge, they use a digital library for the first place that they search for the papers and literature they need, uh, especially those from the uh, from from the high quality universities, they have massive uh, internet connection and uh, cozy sofa and uh, free space um, or uh, cheap coffee, uh, especially for those who don't have a private office and who need to share office with others. They they like to uh, go to the library. So, do we think that there's there's more or that libraries and librarians could do specifically to reach out to ESAS, Anthony? Was that something that came through? Well, yeah, um, it's an interesting reflection now, listening to people. Um, I personally am a researcher working from home, okay? This is what we're doing, all of us. I have I can, I have access to the University College London Library. I have to go into their site. Most of my Early career researchers came from well, well stocked libraries with well stocked libraries. And I press them, where do you get go to when you want to look up, find find a pen? They said, they didn't say, they were vague about this, but uh, they, they recognized when I said the library, of course. <clears throat> there was one quote that I would like to read. I don't, I don't know if, it, if this is of interest, but uh, it, it was kind of shocking. Okay, so this is this is from a a 32-year-old female in chemical sciences um, who's an, an assistant professor. She said most of what the library does is manage subscriptions, journals, and databases. I don't see it changing. The time of the research librarians as active helpers has already passed. Even when I was an undergrad, that was already gone. Yeah, so that that was pretty powerful, okay. and I I heard that it, it, she's not the only one that had some, you know, at least another one uh, that I, I don't really understand why we have libraries. Fabrizio, you're you're nodding. Would your young researchers say the same, or do they see the library in a slightly different light? I I would say that they do uh, share similar um, ideas and thoughts as what. Uh, uh, David mentioned uh, something I would like to add here. This is a bit to me. It's a bit pointy when when uh, early early career researchers say that the librarian should just do more, just hosting webinar on behalf of the publisher. So I think at that point I would just like to thank you um, for the for not only for the for the research that you that you did and presented so clearly, but also spending almost two hours talking to us about it, um, which is hugely appreciated at the various end zones that you're in. <laughs>
from an academic career during COVID and what can we do to address this? Um, so is there a gender imbalance? So now I attempt to bring in uh, Abritza, who I believe is, is available through Zoom. So I wonder if Abritza is able to answer the question for us. Is there a gender imbalance to the dropout in COVID? Fingers crossed. Hello, Mark. Uh, okay, this is Abriza from Kuala Lumpur University of Korea. Uh, no, for my 20 samples, there is no uh, gender imbalance in terms of dropout. There's no dropout in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, in terms of um, uh, working. Yeah, there's no dropout. All right. However, there is a slight um, a difference in terms of uh, uh, publication performance productivity. Okay. Where, uh, yeah, where the females are definitely not, not performing that well compared to the males okay, during a uh, pandemic. Yeah. Great. And as well as securing rich grant. <laughs> That's for our five to samples. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Abritza. Um, one, other, one other question I'd like to just follow up that we discussed in the panel but, but is not here. Obviously, during, during the pandemic, the whole question of public communication and the public understanding of science um, is, is both critical and, um, and kind of prevalent. So I wonder to what extent early career researchers either felt that would like to become engaged in public communication and public understanding and have been either encouraged or discouraged for doing so. Um, so maybe David in Tennessee, um, you could pick that one up if we can get to David Sims. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mark. Um, okay. Yes, I, I noticed um, several um, we we were asking we were asking questions about outreach, and several mentioned um, the um, the the desire to 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 get more uh, uh, public uh, to to focus more on on their their science and what it means uh, to the public. Uh, and I think this has has to do with um, not only the, the the vaccine misinformation and disinformation that was going on uh, in the United States, but also um, everything surrounding the 2020 election, in, in presidential election in, in, in that. So they, I did feel that they were um, a little more um, uh, pumped up uh, to, to get their, their science out and, and, and make sure that people really do understand uh, the importance of it. Great, thank you, thank you, David. Something definitely worth, definitely worth following up. Um, so one, one last question, I think, for us to, to stick to time, um, and that around the definition of an early career researcher. There's a couple of related questions. What is the definition the team used for an early career researcher, and are the findings different in different stages of that early career? Are they segmented in any way? And are there any differences? So, so what defines an early career researcher? Um, perhaps in China, if we can bring in Ji. Hi, Mark. So, um, it, is that your question? It's about um, how to define an early career researcher, right? Correct. Yes. Um, we have uh, some disagreements at the beginning of the the program. Uh, I, I mean, um, like five years ago. But we come to agreements that uh, we define our um, easy our early career researchers as the people who received their uh, uh, doctor degree. This is the first rule. The second, they get uh, re research. Um, contract from either university or, or a company or the government and they are not uh, tenured. They, they, they are on the tenure track and either they got a long term, I mean a longer than five year old, 10 years uh, 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 
working contract. So this is um, this is in China, but as you know, um, we, there are differences between countries. In China, uh, normally people can uh, get a, a research job like postdoc at university when they receive their doctor degree, and sometimes they can be a pure um, research oriented um, uh, 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 staff, and sometimes they need to teach. So we didn't really define um, uh, whether they are pure researchers or they are lecturers at the university. Um, so uh, in my case, uh, I have 24 researchers. Two of them are uh, from teaching intensive university, not research into universities. So they, um, they, they need to much more rather than do pure research. Great, thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Um, so we're almost, uh, we're almost out of time. Um, Anthony, I don't know if there's any closing comment on the definition of ECR or on the research as a whole, um, just to, to round out very, very quickly. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. No, um, it's very much as Gio said, we have some who are assistant professors because they're Temp, they haven't got a permanence as assistant professor. In the UK, of course, their culture is on the whole. Uh, but we very much have a mixture. Um, so it's very much, I think we've all worked the same. We try very hard to work the same. We work to the same script, as it were, when we interview. Great, thank you, thank you. Okay, so again to the panel um, and for joining the original, the original um, panel discussion. A follow up here. So just quickly, I believe we have slides that will help usher you to the next stage of your day. If you could throw those up. So workshop options. There you go. Questions, deep questions for you to answer. Do you know your allocation and you know where to go? There you go. Great. Keep going. Yep. Basement. And Brian, there's your link, which I'm sure you found. Go forth and workshop. Thank you. <laughs>